This is the intro jingle. This is the K-pop Devok show with Eric Nam. Ooh. Hey guys, this is not Eric Nam. G2 in the house sub hosting for Eric Nam at K-pop Tebak. Is it K-pop Tebak with Eric Nam? Honestly, I have never done a podcast by myself. I only done it three times now. Today's the fourth. And all the past three times, I was a guest and I had a bunch of questions that I would answer and I would know the answers to that question because usually those questions would be about me. But today, I'm filling in for Eric Nam because he's on tour being Eric Nam. Well, first of all… Oh, and we have Diane in the house. <laughs> oh my god. Who are are you? <laughs> All right. I go by the name of G2. I'm a rapper. Um, I'm pretty sure there's other hosts. Like um, Amber was here, right? Mm-hmm. Very famous. Yeah. I'm far from famous. So for those who don't know me, please do. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about, I guess, my playlist. And um, Diane told me it had to be Korean but because of the show's title, K-pop. And… um. I don't know. To be honest, I haven't been listening to a lot of Korean songs lately. It's just kind of been a little bit… I don't want to say boring, but it's just been… It hasn't been that intriguing to me. You know, things been like, oh shit, like this sounds new. Everything's been kind of… Yeah, that's nice. Mm -hmm. So, so I was thinking… I might as well just talk about my own songs. Yeah, go for <laughs> it. Honestly, go for it. So the first song, I would say… um. The most recent feature I did… It's, it's not actually my song. It's the one I did with Juno. Juno Flow. He's a really good friend of mine. I'm actually getting dinner with him later. Uh, humble brag. Humble brag. Flex. Flex. <laughs> yeah dude. I got celebrity friends. What's up? Fuck with me. Nah but um… He hit me up for his uh, uh, latest album. Uh, one of his songs called Monday Blues. It was in, in his, his part of his album called Statues. <laughs> I just I don't know it's it's strange it's it, 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 it's a little bit of coincidence like I really just like didn't think of this like before ahead of time I guess but today I was feeling like literally I was feeling a little blue and I was trying to think of like a word between um it's like sometimes I would feel lazy but I wouldn't call that lazy but like kind of depressed. That's like called blues. lethargy. Leth lethargic. 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 And yeah. like apathetic. Yeah, apathetic. Yeah. Yeah. So if you like look at it in a, like a in a negative way, I guess you could call it, you know, lazy. But on the other hand, you could just, you know, call it just like you just, you know, you just don't you're not up for anything today. I was trying to think of the word right? and apparently it's apathetic, lethargic. But it turns out the Monday Blue song popped into my head, which was like the whole concept about being lethargic, having the Monday blues. So there you go. The first song, Monday Blues. How does it work when you're a feature for someone else's song, right? At well, least in this, it might be different every time, for, but for this instance, like, did he give you like a concept to write a verse about or? Well, yeah, I guess you could say that. I mean, the song itself is called Monday Blues and. Honestly, you know like when producers send you beats and they just give you like a random title? That actually helps a lot. Because let's say like he, this guy would send you like a very upbeat and he was just like… He was so lazy with the with the title. He just calls it lazy. And you know, it has those two things you could, you know, see like it might not work. But it might spark an idea like the title itself. Yeah. And like word association. Like, yeah. And then it, yeah, it, it'll just like spark up a new kind of… Thing where you know it's different, and um, yeah, for Juno's song Monday Blues, he sent it to me. It's called Monday Blues, and he has his, he had his verse on it, and he had a hook on it, and yeah, it was like really easy. I think I wrote it super quick, like within an hour. I want to say thirty minutes, but humble. 
Nice. Nice. All right, next song. All right, the next song. All right, you're just like, all right, God, this fucking guy. Let's get this <laughs> no. episode over with. No, why is everyone so self-conscious whenever they get behind the mic for the first time? Just all artists are… I just call myself an artist. You are an artiste. All, no. All artistes is, uh, are, are self-conscious. Mm -hmm. And especially me as a person. Yeah. Anyways. So the second song… I actually don't have a second song. Um, I'm you said just you to think liked of Crush. One. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Napa. So, so the the most recent song that I came across is called Napa by uh, Crush. He crushed it. No pun intended, but he like he fucking killed it. It's so it's, it's super catchy, and I think he's a an all around guy. Like he knows what he's doing, and like I call that type of dude an artist. Yeah, number two on my uh, song list. Do you even know? Do you, do you know the song? Yeah, uh, I think we've mentioned Napa Napa Napa. I think we've mentioned it uh, in the past right when it came out. But do you know Crush personally? Yes and no. Yes. Yes. Yes, I do. Like, I would say hi. Like, he knows me. I know him. But we're not like, you know. Do you guys have an age difference? Or? No, we're the same age. Actually. Oh, really? Yeah. And all of the same age group that I'm in, they're all so fucking big. So it's weird saying like… Because, you know, in… In the Korean culture, if you're the same age, you call them like chingu, which means friend. And when you say like, they're my chingu, which, you know, I'm obviously meaning it as like, we're the same age. I feel like I'm kind of, you know, saying I'm close to them. So like, they're so big. It's just hard. It's, there's like a gap between mm -hmm. the chingus. Because <laughs> like, it's like Nafla is, you know, 92. Juno Flo is 92. Zico is 92. Um, Crush is 92. Dean is 92. Wow. I was like, God damn. <laughs> Something happened. Yeah, Jesus. Like, what the <laughs> f Like, God. Uh, where was the 92… Uh, Energy. Yeah, meeting at. <laughs> Dude, like, fill me in. Oh, but anyways. um, Yeah, that's number two on my list. And it's like… He's… Like I said, Crush is dope. Like, he's… from my Even from a man's perspective, like, he's pretty sexy. And you know, like, a type of… a per Like, a type of thing when you see them, like, you're just like… You when you see them work, it's like, oh shit, that's amazing. That's what you do, <laughs> and you're so good at it. Yeah. It's, it's, and, it, and it was that song that kind of like, kind of like, what do you call it? Like reassured me, him, like him as an artist for me. Yeah. Okay. So third song, last song. The last song, no, not even the last song. I'll say um just just an album as a whole. Just a piece of mind for the soul. Only time can tell life is beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, just a piece of mind for the soul. Only time can tell life is beautiful. Okay. Which is my album. <laughs> which is which I'm not embarrassed to say this at all, but uh, the second official album that I came with was called is called uh, Throwing Up Butterflies, which. I put in a lot of work and I put in a lot of thought into even for the title and the album cover like I designed it myself and which like throwing up butterflies which means you know it literally means throwing up butterflies like and I just wanted to write for myself and other people that would be in my shoes you know like with a lot of anxiety self-conscious and yeah I try to put that into the album and when I was working on the album, I was just in Europe and I did a tour. I did a four city tour and I saw like all these non Koreans, like all these Europeans. And like, damn, all these people, like they don't know Korean, but they're here. So after that tour, I got to work on my album and it's weird. Like naturally, I started writing in English because. It just kind of like that tour assured me, you know, there's all these, you know, um, non-Korean… Like English, there's an audience. English speaking audience. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I was… Yeah. And I think I was just like still in that 
in that field. So when I was working on my album, like I wrote my first verse in English and my like, second verse in Korean. And and I think that was kind of like, honestly, like a downfall of it. Because people were like, what? Yeah. Honestly, yeah. And I think like album-wise, I think nobody really listens to it. I think they were very um, unfamiliar with like that persona that I had. Oh, okay. Or, or maybe, maybe I didn't promote it hard enough. When did the album come out? It came out like a year ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, but then uh, the views are fairly low. Lower than my expectations. So everybody go check it out. Can you… Uh, is there a way to put like my video links <laughs> well, in the video? What is your YouTube channel? It's just, I don't have you a just, YouTube channel. Oh, just, but, yeah. if you just look up G2, yeah, just, yeah, a Throwing I'm, Up Butterflies. I, I think I could confidently say I think I'm the third most famous G2 in this world. There's two other G2s? Yeah, the first one being, I would say, is the, the gaming competition. It's called G2, I believe. Oh my gosh. Like the gaming… The game, oh. Yeah, like the ga- like, uh, gaming. Music. Yeah. And then um, the second famous is probably Gatorade. They're probably tied for first. Do you have uh, music videos from that album? Yeah, I do. Like, yeah. I got like four. Okay. So, uh, well then maybe if for those who are listening… Go check out the music videos and then leave a comment under the one that you like really like the best or something. And thank you, Diane. Say that Tebok show sent you. Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> if you do, I'll reply. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's that G two guarantee. That's that G two guarantee. <laughs> so the third song of G 2s playlist is a fourteen album, fourteen song <laughs> album <laughs> called "Throwing Up Butterflies." Go check it out on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, um, anywhere, any platform that you use, and uh, just be sure to just like you know, spread it to your other friends, like like a pyramid scheme. Pyramid scheme. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I really didn't know what was going down today. Like, I had no idea. So I just came in just to talk shit. And and uh, Diane actually told me, it texted me to think of three songs. So But it still caught you off guard when I asked you in person if yeah, you had those three Yeah, because I, I wasn't thinking anything at all. I was stuck in traffic for like an hour and a half and got here. And then got in front of the mic. Basically, Juno Flo and G2, Crush, and G2. Yes. So I don't even know how Discord works. So the no, next segment, I, I got it. I, okay. I'm gonna ask you questions. Okay. No, what I mean is, I, I don't know what Discord is. So, to be di- honest. so okay. Let is me. Is it s- like Twitch? I'll set it up. So Discord is an app where shows or people can have like their own. It's essentially like a like fan chat rooms. Mm. Um, and so we asked the K-pop Tabak show discussion like fan chat room. Like if they had any questions for you. Oh, so and they they're, they're on it? it like right now? Yeah. Ooh, how many? Uh, there's… Oh, some people are still typing questions. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, But before we go into this, you did mention off camera, off mic, that you wanted to say something about social media. Oh. Yeah, but <laughs> not about like the actual… Well… About your your position with social media. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Well, at first… So when I heard the news that Instagram is going to have likes and the captions gone, at first I was like, uh, like automatically, like anybody else, I think I would have been like, what's the point in having, you know, Instagram with no, you know, that, you know, because that was like the whole thing about Instagram. I'm not saying like I'm into that, but like Instagram is the likes and the and the comments. I think you can see your own likes. It's just that other people can't uh, see. Okay, okay. Like other well, people's likes on their pages. Well, yeah. And then time went by and I got to thinking like it's a lot more healthier if you do have the even the comments off also. Yeah. yeah. I, I would think comments yeah. are more damaging yeah. than number of likes. And people don't realize this because like some people say this to me like so um, nonchalant. Like if I had, you know, this platform like I would do this and or… Like, I don't care what somebody say about me, you know. Like, But, like, you don't know that. Unless, like, when you get, like, actual, like, hate comments. Because, like, I often… I, you know, sometimes do. And I tell myself, like, honestly, like, I'm the type of person that, like, really don't care what that person think. But I'm I'm a human being. And everybody will go through this. Like, once you see those comments, it's, like, it's very… It's pretty hurtful. Yeah. And I, yeah. I feel like it's probably, like, you know, like… If someone like pokes you, that's like nothing. Yeah. But then if someone keeps poking you, yeah, exactly. Then that's when it becomes like A irritating, bruise. right? Yeah. yeah. And so like I tell them like, yo, like I tell people this all the time. 
I'm only doing social media because I feel like I have to in this type of work that I'm in. Because like how else am I gonna… Because social media is such a like a versatile tool that you can use to, you know, do anything. Not even just music, art, like just anything in life. Like your business or, you know, anything. Even charity. If I didn't really feel like it's a versatile tool for me right now as a musician or as an artist, I think… I wouldn't use social media at all. And that's how I feel about social media right now. Everybody's so obligated to like update people or do yeah. something or be on the phone. Like you have to be busy like 24-7. And I'm just like… Whoa. And you have to like show people you're doing yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. And that you're yeah. busy too. And like I said, like I'm not the most active social media user. That's probably why my followers, you know, go down. Like I still don't know how to use fucking Twitter. I'm just so confusing. You I don't know how it works. A, you just yeah, I know, but it's like, it's so tweet. it's so funny to me. Like I'm not I'm not trying to shit on people with like you know small amount of followers, but like let's say somebody some regular ass dude like he's on Instagram Live and there's like only one person watching. Yeah, it, right? that, I'm like that is weird. What's the fucking point? Just call them. I follow someone very specifically. That's a friend's like. A friend of mine's like old neighbor. I never met this person. Yeah. But me and him watch their Instagram stories. Because they talk to the camera as if a billion people are watching. It's like the most fascinating thing. And she lives in… Oh, I can't say. But yeah. she lives, you know, kind of in the middle of nowhere yeah. type of vibe. Yeah, yeah. And she'll be like, So, so many of you have been asking me about blah, blah, blah. And you're like, who? <laughs> who has been asking you? Yeah, dude. There are people like that. They're like, it's they amazing. seek attention. Like, it's amazing. And I get it. I get like, everybody, like this generation, everybody wants to be famous. Yeah. But like, like this, this, this is just my personal stance. Like… I just don't understand and see the point. Like in having those attention. Like if, what does it actually do for you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like if it… Like yeah, I guess whatever floats your boat as in like far as like, you know, if it boosts up your confidence level. Like, you I mean, I guess that's a good thing. But just, just… Yeah, just I don't know. I can't really stand. Like that's why… So my point is being on Twitter. Like I do type shit in. But I still don't know how that like… Work still like so people like retweet my shit and I guess I go viral sometimes. You do? No, I'm just I'm just asking. Well, that's that's just like the idea that like you that's a goal at all. Okay. For so that's other the goal. people, it's just like yeah. I'm just like putting shit out there because I'm bored and I just yeah. want to like talk. Because like I type, I got I get drunk and I just like <laughs> I have to I have to let somebody know this opinion of mine right now. Yeah. So I like there's times where I type it in and I like I I say because. Because I believe that a lot of Instagram users that I get likes, a lot of likes on, are usually Korean based. Mm. Like, so I try to be more Korean on the Instagram. Yeah. But whenever I have shit to say, like, I would, I can't say it on Instagram. Yeah. So I, I say it on Twitter, I guess. Because if you do it in Korean, I guess, people, you get a lot of backlashes, I, I, I feel like, more than English. Korean words itself is very, like, is very sensitive. Like I don't know how to like. Is maybe I'm translating. There's a some lot of shit nuances wrong. in Korean. Um, That's exactly that English it. doesn't have. Yes. And so those nuances can be easily taken the wrong way. Yes. Um. It's just because that's how the language is. Yeah, like yeah. today, like I posted on Instagram story about like how you know in Korea in Seoul actually in Seoul people don't really like can't drive right. Like they can't get the lanes right, even the lanes, and mm. like and <laughs> I, I got imagine opinions. And I, yeah. <laughs> And I imagine myself if I say this in like in like if I spoke my true thoughts, you know, in Korean. Yeah. I feel like I would get a lot of backlashes. But then you'll go to like LA where everyone just talks shit about how people in LA can't drive. Yeah. And people from LA like don't bat an eye. And they'll I feel be like, like I can't yeah. have those opinions because <laughs> I'm I guess people feel like I'm defending America. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Yeah. I've drove I've drove since I was 15. Mm -hmm. And I've recently started driving here in Korea like maybe 2 3 years ago. And I don't understand why people wouldn't let you in. Like, what's the rush? We're all stuck in the same traffic. It's they never let you in. It's that it's, you know, it's that competitive nature. Yeah. So today, like, so why I, do something for someone else? Yeah, I was in the right lane, merging into the left. So like, I would have to go in, right? Yeah. And I'm like, it's like either that or hitting a wall. Yeah, or him. Yeah. And or her. So this guy is not letting me in. Like, I I'm like the most um, self defense. Yeah, driver. Like, driver. I'm like, I'm like, I do the, the blind check and everything. <laughs> like I yeah. do the signal. 
I do, you know, like everything that I was taught in driver's ed. I rolled the windows down and I'm staring at this guy like, are you fucking serious? Like, where are you, what are you trying to achieve by not letting me in? Like, we're going to have to like… Meet. Either we do it yeah, safely exactly. or we yeah. do it where someone's paying out of their insurance. Oh, God, this is pointless talk. But <laughs> anyway, okay. so that's like the highlight of my day. And, <laughs> and so this guy like, you know, obviously he had to let me in and he let me in and that happened. All right. Well, with all that said, yeah. I'm going to ask you questions my balls from people. Here. Oh my God. Well, we're almost at the finish line. Um, these are questions from our K-pop Tebuk Discord. If you're not on it, get on it. All right. So when you were on… Uh, this is from Subdued Cravings. When you were on… What's Subdued Cravings? Is that his ID? That's what you're saying. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay, okay, okay. Uh, when you were on Show Me The Money… How do, you know, people in that show make sure that they stand out from the others? Or is that a thing that they consider when they're… What? The, 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 the show me producers? The money. Like… No, the, the, the rappers. The rappers? Yeah. Honestly, I don't know about anybody else. Like, for, for me, I was like so focused on just like not fucking up. Yeah. That, you know, I eventually did fuck up. Well, a lot of people don't know this. I've mentioned this before. But I have mad like stage fright. Even in the smallest stages, even in the even if it's not a stage, even if it's just cameras, like the show me the money itself is the schedule itself is very tight, and the wait is um like crazy long, like frustrating long. Even Gandhi would have been like, "What the?" F-? <laughs> like even like the most peaceful dude, he would be like, "This isn't right." Long like this, yeah. it was. It's kind of brutal. It's just to like. I think the longest wait time that I did during shoot was like maybe 15 hours yeah. to maybe 20 just to rap, not even a minute. And so to carry that anxiety and that nervousness in your system and to just like have it just like just sh- have that adrenaline rushing like all of a sudden like on cue, it's kind of, it was a little bit too much for me. So I don't know. I didn't focus on standing out. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I did. But much respect to the rappers that had that in mind because you don't have a lot of, you know, that comfortability in your in your in your system. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's definitely frustrating. When G2 composes his pieces, does he look for the right beat, um, then fills in the lyrics, or is it the other way around? Which kind of genre does he feel the most comfortable or cha- challenging to work with when making songs? I guess it all depends on in different scenarios. Well, okay, so first of all, it's both. Sometimes I would have lyrics written out. So one time I wrote this in a club. Like I normally don't enjoy clubs. And I was being a fucking loser on the couch. And I wrote like two whole verses. Just I just had them on my notes. And and I had I was in a I was in a studio with uh, Big Banana. Uh, this is a producer of mine and a homie of mine in, in LA. Anyways, so he plays the beat, he makes a beat, and I'm like, oh you did like I just have this perfect you know, lyrics for it. And I would, you know, trim down some parts of it. And there's one case. And the other case is, you know, a producer would usually, you know, ask me like, yo, what kind of beat are you feeling? And we would just, you know, get to talking. And I would write according to that beat. Currently right now, the most challenging is to find something to talk about. Like I, like we mentioned before in Korea, you just, you have to be very careful about controversial subjects. And I'm like a very like a self-conscious slash conscious guy that like I think too much. I guess that's like the most challenging thing. Like I think way too much than I should. And a lot of my songs that I've done just like just drunk and like not thinking being stupid did fairly well. And the songs that I was way too invested like… Too careful. Yeah, too careful about was just didn't go too well. Hmm. So there you go. Okay, so from Maple Melts. What other genres of music do you listen to aside from hip-hop? Where do you get your inspiration for your creative ideas from? And… Okay, this is too many questions. Just those two. <laughs> yeah. Um, I listen to all kind of music. Oh, I, I actually like country. I like pop. I like old pop. Like oldies pop. Like the Beatles. Oh, okay. Like I like Beatles. Um, it's funny. I was listening to a lot of Frank Sinatra. And… The movie Joker came out and it was like all that New York, that, you know, that kind of… New York jazz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when that came out, that kind of like sparked it again. So I've been listening to a lot of the Joker OST 
or the artist from the the album. And yeah, I listen to all kinds of genres, but mostly I would say if it's not hip hop, I want I like to listen to like Willie Nelson. Mm. Yeah, it's it's soothing. And for far as like creative ideas go, I write a lot of one liners, just simple thoughts that I have when I come across something. I just write it down, and that becomes usually nothing. But sometimes it enlights something to to lead into a different song. So yeah. Yeah. Do you like have like notes on your phone or something? That's just yeah, like all the time. So like lyrics? honestly, like recently my phone broke and everything. Like I don't have anything backed up and everything went away. Like the photos for the past two years, oh. videos, which is which I was pretty sad, but. When all my notes came back from iCloud, I was very relieved. Yeah. More than the photos. Yeah. So that's that's how much it means to me. Like the notes. Because I have some like… It's really nothing. But it's just like… I guess the sense of security like that I have them. There's a lot of like random ass thoughts that's on here. <laughs> um, the throwaway ones can become your tweets. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> But it's, it's pretty… There's a lot of depressing ones too. I don't want to depress anybody oh, on Twitter. Yeah. I, Honestly, I would like to hear those lyrics on like a Frank Sinatra like remixed like oh hip-hop beat. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Fly me to the moon. I'm like a way too serious person to do that kind of stuff. When it comes to like your music and stuff… You are like more serious than would you say like your everyday yeah, personality. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Well, that's the thing though too. Um, a lot of people kind of see me as like the the class clown and like the jokester. I mean, which I am. I'm like, I'm a pretty fun person. I'm a pretty light person. But like most of the days when I'm not that, I'm a very like serious, like deep, boring person. <laughs> like I'm a type of person that like when people are like, oh, come to this party. I'm like… Uh no, like mm-hmm. I'm gonna be here in this corner store having a bottle of soju with a homie. Yeah, and th- th- that works a lot the other way around. I know a lot of comedians who, like, in real everyday yeah. life, are super quiet. Yeah, and like shy yeah, and like definitely. not trying to make jokes or make like yeah. impress anyone. And like that's that. I think that's one of the reasons why I do what I do is because you know if I don't, yeah, I think I would seriously be in. Like crisis, a world of depression. This is like a pretty familiar expression, but like people really don't know what depression looks like. You know, yeah, it, it comes in, it comes in disguises. So, anyways, next. <laughs> All right. Oh, this one's pretty simple. And uh, just what's your go-to jam right now? Something that will hype you up or like get you ready for the day. Hype me. Oh, actually. Doesn't have to be Korean, just any song. Um, Anderson Pack featuring Smokey Robinson, Make It Better. Mm. Amazing song. And like that's the type of song that like I would get out of the shower naked and just like <laughs> just look myself in the mirror, just like just kind of groove to it, you know what I mean? Yeah. All right. And do the little home alone. <laughs> yep. This was G2 sub hosting for Eric Nam at the Deba K pop show with Eric Nam. Yeah, for those people who fuck with the show, constant listeners, first listeners, follow us at at Daebak Show on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And subscribe to the show on whatever podcast platform so you don't miss out on every single episode because you don't know who might be here like me. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, and then subscribe to the YouTube channel because we have an awesome content going up almost every day. And follow me at G2's Life and our future podcast that's coming up. So just, you know, keep up looking at my Instagram. Yeah. And hitting the likes and commenting. I just… I, I'm mad that I just said I fucking hate social media. And <laughs> you like, just plugged all Please that? comment. Uh, no, I recall. Please. Okay, thank you. Say bye. Bye, guys. Hey, guys. Did you guys like that video? Then make sure you guys subscribe to Dive Studios YouTube channel and put your notifications on because we got a lot more great content coming your way. Look at this video. See? Wow. Wow. And this and this is great too. Enjoy. <laughs>